everyone here on Stained Glass Cuts thought I'd bring you along on this experiment. When I was first experimenting with stained glass rings, I made this ring from some dichroic clear glass. And in my last video, I made a bunch of two inch rings. As it turned out, not planned, eight of the two inch rings I made fit almost exactly around the inside of the clear ring. So I thought I'd better play with this serendipity. I have videos that will give you more details on the skills I'll be using, how to make stained glass rings, and how to fuse stained glass rings together. Links to those videos can be found in this video's description. The first thing I thought about was what would happen to the rings in the kiln as they were heated. I knew the outside diameter of all the rings would expand, but what about the inside diameter? especially of this large ring, would it expand into the hole before it melts? If it does, it might force the inside rings, which are expanding, to pop out. And after some research, nothing on glass rings, by the way, I found that a metal ring, when it expands, as it's heated, increases both the inside diameter of the hole and the outside. Duh. That's why running hot water on a stuck metal jar lid can loosen it. I'm betting it's the same thing for a glass ring. If you want to think of it another way, imagine a glass rod that's been bent into a loop. As it expands on heating, the rod gets longer and the loop gets bigger. Okay, so the big ring is going to get bigger until it melts. This could be a problem. I know the purple rings will also expand, but will they expand fast enough to stay in contact with the large ring? Hmm, I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to use the same technique I use in joining rings together. I'm going to take a roughly half inch piece of stringer, and I will position it over the gap between the purple ring and the large ring. I'll also do the same between the purple rings. What this will do is as the kiln heats up, these little bits of stringer will melt first, and they will also, hopefully, give us enough material to fill any void that might develop during the expansion stage between all of these gaps. So, what to do with the center? We know that pieces of glass lined up in a straight line that are touching will expand, staying in contact until they melt and join together. So placing small jewels against the purple rings should cause them to join together. No problem. I'm feeling pretty confident about this experiment so far. So let's change that. I thought it would be cool to add a ring in the middle, but I didn't have one the right size. Really? Guess I'm out of serendipity. So, using some jewels, I made a ring to put in the middle. But it was too small, so I'll add these small yellow jewels to take up the gap. As a standalone design, I'm confident that this would all join together when fired. But because this orange ring will have taken away space into which the purple rings could have expanded, I'm not sure what will happen. So here's what's going in the kiln. I'll add the stringers in the kiln. I'd love to know what you think will happen. Will the large ring expand so much that it gets away from the purple rings? Will the purple rings expand so much that they pop out of the inside of the large ring? Will some of the purple rings not fuse together? Will the yellow jewels be pushed out of contact by the expansion of the other design elements? 
Will the orange ring of jewels fuse completely, or will they be pushed out of contact by the purple rings and the yellow jewels? Will something happen we haven't even thought about? Or will everything go just perfectly? If one is utter failure and ten is perfection, what would you give our chances? I'm going with an 8.5. Into the vessel. And here we are. Nice. All the fusing occurred as planned. One thing I enjoy about fusing glass pieces together with spaces in the design is seeing the distortion of the glass caused by viscosity and the shapes that evolve in between the pieces of glass. Here you can see how our purple ring was distorted into a new shape. The clear stringers work great for joining the purple rings to the outside ring. I think in the future I might use black stringers to join my colored rings together. It would add a nice design element. I'm really happy with what I see here, but there's some room for improvements. You'll notice a slight distortion in the outer edge of the clear rings where they make contact with the purple. I think I might try making the outside ring slightly wider in the future, and that should fix that. Second, the holes that evolved in the middle are distorted. This one's pretty good. I'm going to blame the orange jewels for that. I think if we had had a solid ring in the middle that fit, that that would have been eliminated. I have a lot of ideas to try based on what we've seen here, but for now, I'll add a chain and hang this up outside. And there you have it, an experiment in inner ring fusing. Please consider liking and subscribing, and thanks for watching. Cheers! Mm -hmm.